Hey, so today we're going to talk about buck converters and boost converters. And we're going to start by analyzing a very simple circuit. We all know a simple voltage source and a resistor. Um, so let's say we connect these two points and we all know what's going to happen here. The current is going to start flowing and the amount of current is going to be V divided by R uh, by simple Ohm's law. And if we plot this, the current through here over time, we're going to get a simple um, graph like this. We're, all we've done is just added an inductor and let's complete the circuit like this. Actually what happens is pretty much the exact same thing. And you, and you might go, whoa, we've added a new component here. We have an inductor here. But nothing special really happens except that this same current graph happens but there's a slight delay in the current, which is visible on this graph right here. And the slope is just the derivative, di dt. And what the inductor does is it just lags the current as it goes through. These two circuits are the same. The only thing that's happening is that the inductor is just lagging the current through um, with a very specific mathematical pattern. Um, so what you get is a slope and you should, this, you should, um, this is how you should always think about the inductor. Um, and let's draw another circuit here, which is even simpler. Just this. And let's complete the circuit here. So what's the current going to be? So in this previous example here, the maximum current is limited by the resistor. So when you complete the circuit, the maximum current you're going to get is just the voltage divided by the resistance. But in this example here, we don't have the resistor. So if we plot this on with time, you're going to get the same slope as in this example, but it's just going to go on forever like this. Um, and once the current gets high enough, um, you're going to start burning the wire and we're going to uh, go over this property of the inductor a lot more later um, when we're talking about the boost converter. Um, so the, so why I wanted to show you this example is because the buck converter pretty much just looks like this. This is a very simple version of a buck converter uh, without the switch. So imagine you have a switch here. I'm going to draw that in green. Um, and when you close the circuit, this, you're going to get this current graph. But the what we're interested in is the voltage here. And this is going to be our V out of the buck converter. Um, now imagine you cut the circuit right about as the current reaches here and let's say this is the and we know by Ohm's law that the voltage VO is just going to be the current times the resistance and if we keep so I'm going to zoom in here this graph right here you've closed the switch and you're about to get current through the circuit but before you reach this level here, you just cut the switch. And so what's going to happen is the current is going to start going down again. And then you turn the switch on again. And you cut it, and you turn it on again, and you cut it, and you turn it on again. And what you're getting is a current that stays right about here. And if you multiply that by the resistance, you're going to get your voltage out. So that's basically just how a, how a buck converter works, how you'll, you'll get the, the voltage that you want. Uh, but there's going to be a little bit of a ripple, as you can see here. This is going to be your average current. And you're going to have a max and a minimum, and you can choose by design how, how big of a ripple you want. Um, the percentage ripple of between the average, so you can do ripple. Um, 
So that's just basically how the buck converter works. And it's not that bad once you look at a, a simple circuit. Um, like this one. Uh, and you might obviously see uh, a more advanced version with the capacitor here to smooth out the ripples. And this switch isn't going to be uh, mechanical. It's probably going to be a transistor. So we can just add a transistor switch here. A MOSFET or whatever. And so you're just choking as the, you're, you're building up current here and you're switching at such a speed whereas you're staying within a, a, a range here and you can get a somewhat steady output voltage. But it can never go above the input voltage. Probably going to have a diode going something like this. Uh, so once you close the switch, uh, you're gonna, still going to have current going through like that. And now let's look at the the boost. So I showed you this example here. You just close. So let's close the switch here. Current is going to go through this inductor, and it's going to go up. I mean, this is off the charts right here. So we're probably going to pinch it. Let's just say here. And what we do then is we open the switch. So now we we have a lot of current going through here, and let's just add a resistor here. Now all this current is going to go, to complete the circuit, is going to go through the resistor instead. Um, and you remember VO is going to be I times R. So we now have a lot of I, so we're actually boosting the output voltage. And basically that's the property of the inductor that's so special and that makes it so versatile in these uh, converters. And of course you're going to see... Uh, capacitor here smoothing out you actually um, in the finished design you're probably going to see a lot more um, diodes because you actually have to complete the circuit um, well, let's take a look at this example you're probably going to need uh, you don't want to dump that power so this is actually going to invert uh, the voltage and we can talk about that later when we talk about chook and buck boost converters but these are the basic principles of how how it bucks and boosts the voltages. And it's not that complicated once you look at uh, just a simple circuit like this. Because we all know what this is going to do. It's just going to give us a, a steady current. Um, and once we add the inductor, we're just going to get we're going to get the exact same thing as this. Just it's going to the current is going to lag as it goes up to this level right here. And so for the buck, we can just pinch it using a switching transistor here and just keep it steady at this lower level. Um, but with the boost, we're kind of doing the same thing, but we're letting it boost past this level by um, shorting the inductor here. And once we get to the desired voltage we want, uh, then we just complete the circuit. And, and obviously it'll ripple a little bit, but we get something like this. And this way we can reach a lot higher voltages. So once you know that, it's actually easier to memorize the topologies you don't have to memorize the buck or boost topologies. Um, all you just have to remember is how the inductor works. Because um, then you know where to put it. I mean, yeah, and then you'll be able to wake up 3 in the morning uh, and know this by heart. So yeah, I hope that helped. These are some of the tricks that I use to understand these converters and how the, all the components work.